All right. Well, I am here with the former great senator from the great state of South Carolina, the one and only Jim DeMint. How are you doing today, Senator Jim DeMint? Anna, I'm doing great. Uh, we'd both be doing better if we were back in South Carolina. So uh, I love Greenwood. Spent a lot of time there. It's good to be with you today. Absolutely. You know, I was uh, thinking about, of course, you're here talking. We're talking about immigration. And, you know, there's so many levels to immigration. It's not just, I guess, really just a slam a door shut. We've got so many people here. We've got people here legally. We've got people here illegally. And of course, we have people that have been here for years. What do we do about that, Jim? Well, no offense, but that's not the right question. Okay. (laughs) The, the, The first question about immigration should be, how do we create an immigration system that works for all Americans, that works for hardworking taxpayer taxpaying Americans. And that's what our immigration should do, system should do. But when you start talking immigration in Washington, the first question, what are we going to do about the people who came here illegally? That's the last question. Okay. What we need to do is think about how do we bring in the people who are going to build an economy and create more prosperity for naturalized American citizens, for Americans who were born here. So that's the way we look at it. We do need a modern immigration system. And to have an immigration system, you have to be able to control your borders and select who's coming and going to keep your country safe, to make sure that folks who are coming here can actually add to your economy and don't add to your uh, public uh, roles. Uh, So we can fix our system. But I don't think it should begin by rewarding people who came here illegally. Uh, that is not the right way to go. But And I know from working with the left, whether it's Obama, the people in the House and the Senate, um, they don't want to fix our system. They want the amnesty because it's going to result in more voters and more union members for them. And I know from working with them that sounds cynical to maybe folks back home. Uh, But we need an immigration system that doesn't work for the politicians and give cheap labor to the corporations. It helps average everyday Americans. So to get there, first question, what do you do about the people that have lived here illegally for 25, 30 years? Well, first we need to realize they're all very different. They all have very different status. Some some came and just overstayed their visas, so they came here legally, but they stayed here when right. they weren't supposed to. Uh, some are, are have been here working for many, many years and uh, actually are adding to the economy. But there are some who have broken our laws that are criminals that don't have jobs, living on public assistance. So you can't look at them all as one group sure. to be dealt with the same way. But none of them should be rewarded with with citizenship in our country. There's some who may, uh, over time, b- b- have some legal right to stay with family members. But again, addressing those who are here before we fix our system, before we control our borders, before we have a worker identification program that employers can actually use, and before we have a guest worker program that works for farmers and hospitality, work that hires Americans first, mm-hmm. and if you can't find Americans, uh, brings, brings in folks who will do it temporarily. But a lot of immigrants would prefer a guest worker program. They're not here to be citizens. They needed to make a living, and they would prefer well, to go, they send it all back home. Go back home. Yeah. Uh, and until the '60s, when the the the, the leftists in Congress changed it, we had a vibrant system in South Carolina. We saw a lot of folks come in seasonally to to pick peaches and uh, to pick crops, and they would go back home or work in the hotels and in Charleston. But they saved money and eventually started their own businesses back home. Now. We, we make it hard for the guest system to work, and it, and it goes back to guest workers don't vote. They don't join unions, and the left doesn't want them. Uh, so they, want, they want permanent residency and amnesty for those who came here illegally because they basically have been already organized by a lot of unions in America. Sure. So uh, as we look at um, things that are happening, such as what uh, is happening in Spartanburg, the resettlement program they're talking about bringing into uh, Spartanburg, what do you think about that? I'm not even f- familiar with that. So, um, oh, okay. I, I, I think what, what unfortunately what's happening is a lot of states and localities are having to figure out how to deal with the issue themselves because the federal government won't do its constitutional job to 
basically protect our country. You can't have a country if you don't have borders. You can't have an immigration system if you can't control your borders. So uh, I, I don't know about that particular sure. program, but I do see states everywhere um, who are having trouble with this issue. We've, we've got over half the states who file suit against the federal government for, for Obama's amnesty, and the first judge has sided with them. So hopefully that, that we're, we're, we're starting to realize that this way of dealing with immigration is hurting everyone. Now, we need to seal the borders. Mm -hmm. How can we do that? They talk about how expensive it is to do that. Well, and I, I was with former governor of Texas, Rick Perry, last weekend, and we, we talked about this. He, he said it's not hard to do if you want to do it. Um, there's a certain number of uh, miles along the border uh, we had estimated about 700 that's most vulnerable to pedestrian traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a law in the books that says the federal government will build 700 miles of double layer fencing. What that means is two fences with a road in the middle right. so you can patrol it with the truck. You can use um, drones and other things to actually patrol other areas that are more difficult for people to walk through that they can't drive through. There are only a few areas where you can actually drive through. So it's not like we've, while there are thousands of miles, we can do this and it's not nearly as expensive as what we're doing now. And that's allowing people just to overrun our borders and get on the public rolls. It's costing really hundreds of millions of dollars to states. So if the federal government wanted to, and if there weren't such wanted to, key strong word. political interests from, again, unions, from corporate America who wants cheap labor, uh, unions who want more members, there's just a lot of big interest who want to keep this system going. So Americans really have to stand up and realize that if you want to do the compassionate thing for our mm -hmm. country, is let's make sure that, that those folks who come here legally for opportunity and a better way of life actually get it when they get here and that we're leaving this country better than we found it. We can't do it if we allow the immigration system to basically run on open borders. It's not, it's not only bad for our economy, it's dangerous. Absolutely. I mean, we, we've got people now who want to hurt us, who can easily get in our country. Uh, and if we're not willing to control our borders, um, and if our government won't do that for us, they're not doing their primary job, which is to protect Americans. You know, it just seems like that um, <clears throat> we can't find a way, though, with our Congress and our senators. There doesn't seem to be the will to do anything about it, Jim. Right. Well, I... Uh, I think you're, we're going to continue to have resistance on the left and uh, really a, a number who you might think are on the Republican side, like uh, corporate America, um, have, have been basically um, for some form of amnesty because in return for agreeing with amnesty, they can get the high-tech visas they want and things like that. So I'm convinced Americans, if, if they just wake up and they look at this and they stop voting for people who are out there talking about um, versions of amnesty. If they vote for something that actually is going to help our country, uh, and, and they're deceived. I, when I hear politicians saying it's compassionate to basically give amnesty and everything, you're not thinking about the people, the little kid in America who wants some opportunity, who needs a chance at a job. And uh, <laughs> we need to think about our, the folks who are here, particularly elected officials. Their job is to serve the citizens of this country not to right <laughs> not, not to be trying to help everybody in the world i wish we could but we can't but if we make this country stronger and more prosperous that's the best way we can help people around the world and that's always been true uh, so people can change this but only if they get engaged and stop listening to the nonsense from politicians Vote for people who understand that, that, that following laws uh, and enforcing laws is the most compassionate thing that we can do as a government for our people. Uh, so um, I, I'm hoping people are going to wake up and not just on the immigration issue. There's so many things going on now that, uh, that, that, that have been passed by Congress, like Dodd-Frank, that's destroying community banks, and Obamacare is destroying our health care system. The president's foreign policy is making the world 
very dangerous. He said he wanted to transform America. It, well, he has transformed America in a very negative way, but it's not too late to fix it. Uh, w <laughs> Can just, we be two more years? Just a, uh, well, that's part of what we're trying to do is minimize the damage. A lot of states are making great progress in, in things like freedom in the workplace and paycheck protections where people don't have to join unions. They're lowering their taxes. They're fixing their pension plans. Um, they're going to more education choice. So as we look at states around the country, and there's a lot to be encouraged about. Uh, but we just have to keep the federal government from doing more damage over the next couple of years and hope the American people will wake up and elect a president who understands that we can't do everything in Washington. We've Government closer to home is more accountable and more effective. It's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than trying to run our schools and our health care system from here in Washington. Uh, big government does not help the little guy. If that's one thing I want to leave to the people back home, is if anyone stands up in Washington and says this government program is going to help the little guy in South Carolina, they're lying through their teeth. Because big government is for bigs, big corporations, big unions, big banks. And if you want a government that serves you, it's going to have to be a government that starts in Greenwood and in South Carolina. And we won't think it's perfect, but it isn't going to be nearly as corrupt and wasteful as we have here in Washington. I want to leave you with one thought before you go. I really appreciate you taking the time. Has the Heritage Foundation thought about having its own 24-hour cable news network with with possibly um, some falling in love with America, you know, type stories and this type of thing? Well, we're close to that now. We're not video. <laughs> But we have Daily Signal and DailySignal.com. It's, it's just a, a, a daily news source, and it, it will help people see what's going on uh, from a conservative perspective. We have AmericaWithin.com, which is really positive stories about what Americans are doing uh, for themselves and for each other that's outside of government. Uh, that we'll keep developing this because uh, this country is wonderful. Everyone should fall in love with it. And the more we love our country, uh, I think the more we'll love each other. And I think the more it'll help all of us. Uh, and that may, may sound a little um, lovey-dovey for conservatives Hokey. out yeah. there. But uh, it, it's true. We're very blessed to be in this country. And we have been left as stewards of the greatest country in the world. And we, it's time we, we step up and um, do our responsibility. All right. Thank you so okay. much, Senator Jim DeMint. I appreciate it.